The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning at verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in, grain, in, grazing, in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he has accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be, made, will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand for the Alleluia in verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did, you, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothed you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. 
For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to me, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into e- eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's sermon comes from Ezekiel 34, about Jesus being our shepherd king. I'd like to direct your attention to the picture in front of you on our uh, screens. This is one of my favorite stained glass pictures of Jesus. And as you can see, he's holding one of his precious little lambs in his arms. When you look at this picture, maybe the passages from Psalm 23 and John 10, jog your memory. John 10 being the gospel reading about the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. I'd like to share a little bit with you about the world of shepherding. In the world of shepherding, you have your cute and cuddly lambs, but also in rare occasion, you have what is called a bummer lamb. A bummer lamb is one that is born blemished with birth defects. It will be rejected by its mother. She won't feed it. Sadly, some mothers will try to smother it or shoulder it to drive it away from the rest of the flock. It's easy to spot one of these little bummer lambs because their heads are always hung low and their spirit is broken. What does a good shepherd do when he sees one of these little lambs? Well, he will take this little lamb into his arms. The shepherd will feed it and give it proper nutrition and wrap it up and keep it warm by the fire at night. A good shepherd will let this little lamb sleep on his chest as he cares for it. The shepherd will nurse it back to health. And when it's strong enough, he will reintroduce it to the flock. And now this little lamb is no longer called the bummer lamb, but a shepherd's lamb because because of what the shepherd did for that little lamb. It is the shepherd's lamb because it will be the first one to run to the shepherd when it hears his voice, the first one to greet the shepherd when he hears him. As you heard in our readings today, the image of sheep and shepherd are very common in the scriptures. The job of a shepherd is to lead the sheep to find good food and still waters. The shepherd also has this important role to protect the sheep from their enemies and also to care for the injured and the sick. In today's Old Testament reading, Ezekiel isn't calling out your average shepherds in the field. He's calling out the religious shepherds who had failed and caring for the spiritual livelihood of their flock. They gorged themselves in self-interest while the sheep starved. And rather than protecting the flock from their enemies, these shepherds became enemies to the flock. You don't have to look very far in our world today to see that this text still supplies in our world. Every once in a while when you turn on the news, you hear about a church that removed the pastor because of a serious misconduct. There are documentaries about preachers and sneakers where it uncovers the lavish lifestyles of people who don't preach a word of scripture, people who don't visit their sick or return calls when somebody needs them, but yet they call themselves preachers and pastors. A few of you shared with me why you left your previous church and the hurt that it has caused you. You share with me stories of family members who were hurt by the church 
and now they won't even step foot in one. It hurts, and it's very sad because it comes from a place of trust. But I have good news for you as found in our Old Testament. The words from Ezekiel is a word of promise and good news from God that he will make things right. He says, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at the weak with your horns till you have scattered abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey and I judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. Ezekiel promises us that God will make things right when the time comes and that our God is on a serious search and rescue mission for those who are abused and misused and hurt by these false shepherds. He makes a promise that I will rescue my flock and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. God is already doing that today as we speak. He seeks out the bummer lambs. He seeks out those of us who feel helpless and pushed aside, exiled. For those of us who are lost, hunger for for righteousness sake, and blemished by original sin. I'd like to redirect your attention to the picture again. This stained glass image shows you the good news that Jesus has completed this search and rescue mission. He has sought you out, and he has found you. He holds you close to his arm and to his chest before it's too late. A good shepherd knows what to do in times like this. In this case, Jesus will lay down his life for his sheep. He becomes that sacrificial lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Like a sheep being led to the slaughter, or a lamb that is silent before its shearers, he did not open his mouth. Jesus knew what it was like to be rejected by his own people, his own flock. Jesus carried our sins on his shoulders when he went to the cross. He was broken in spirit as he hung there for six hours. Jesus had his head hang low for you. He was lowly and he died alone. The stained glass picture also shows you how Jesus has made you into the shepherd's lamb. He rose from the dead on the third day. He covers every single one of our blemishes with his blood. You are the shepherd's lamb whom he loves, whom he holds closely and won't let go. He has brought you into his fold, and you know his voice. Jesus makes you lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside still waters, and he fills your cup. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Matthew's gospel also shows you and I that we are brought into his flock, but there's still work to be done. Our shepherd seeks out his lost sheep through people like us. He calls us to be his hands and his feet. And it can be done in all sorts of small ways that can make a difference. It can be as simple as having somebody over for a meal that you know is lonely. You can see it in our food pantry every month when our volunteers hand out food to those who are in need. Our youth do a really great job packing college packages for students who are away, providing gloves and warm clothes for the homeless visiting somebody in prison or in the hospital, calling somebody you haven't seen in church for a while, sending a card, praying for somebody at Market Basket. All these things seem small, but they make a difference. Because Jesus said, Truly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. So thanks be to God for being our shepherd, king, and for Jesus Christ who rescued us with his life. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your heart and your mind in